What up, everybody? Welcome to another Thursday night, late night paint night at Time Warp Custom Paint. It's me, Adam, again, and we have Ashley over here running the computers. She'll relay any questions that you guys have. But as you can see, we have something pretty crazy going on. Uh, so what we'll be doing is a Newman. Uh, uh, so I have a little bit of a paper stencil of this Newman and basically to be painting it right here. If you guys remember last Thursday night, we painted up the rest of this mailbox. So you can see that we did a, a purple pearl. So we have a black base coat, a purple pearl. And I went ahead and clear coated this and sanded it down with a 600 grit. And we you can see here, we have the silver leaf that's been spun. We did some of the, we did a purple can or a, a purple candy here and then a black candy around the Newman. I think there's actually a little bit of purple candy in there as well. And that's about it. So, and the plan is for this Thursday, we're gonna go ahead and throw this guy on there, the old Newman. But, uh, okay, cool, we're getting started. Let's start with the Super Chat. Who, who is that? Is that working there? Mm -hmm. Just wait, maybe it will. Sorry, guys, still trying to get live on Amazon as well. Randy sent you a $5 super chat. Oh, what up, Randy? Thank you so much. Who else we got in the house? We got Michael Jarvis. We got AJ, Patrick, what up? Josh, Scott, Lewis, Randy, Isaac, what up, brother? Brian, Darren, Cody, Jeremy, Carrie. What's up, guys? Recognize a lot of those names. I appreciate you guys being here every week. We're going to get right to it. I'm not going to cut the whole stencil here because it would take me forever. And then it's really hard to concentrate to get some of these intricate cuts. But here is the reference. So there's the reference. I'll kind of give you an idea what what it's going to look like and how, it, how I do cut it out. Um, that way I have a little bit of footage of it as well. But I do, like I said, I do have it all the way done. It's a little bit smaller because this I planned on doing it that size. Felt like that was too big. I'm gonna go with something like this right here. So you can see that's the stencil, that's the printout, just just on regular paper. And then basically all I did was cut cut out the darkest areas, which was the black, and then I did cut out some of the dark gray as well. But um, all I needed was enough to be able to get my dark areas. And then the rest, like, you know, the highlights here, the other shadows there, they'll all, I'll do, we'll do those freehand and maybe some, we'll do some shields and stuff like that to be able to get like some of these harder lines right here. But we are going to use this basically as a roadmap to uh, lay out our Newman. But okay, enough talking. I'll go ahead and get taping this up. You guys have any questions? Let me know. I'll go ahead and answer those as we go. But I did put a piece of lime line right there, eighth inch, that way. I can go ahead and shield this up without disturbing uh, the, the leafing there because that is not clear coated and, and has not been protected. So we don't want to tape to it. That's still not working, huh? Mm -hmm. Let's see. Let me go back. That's weird. It looks like it's checked there. Like it's is that Pam though? Huh. Well, that's all right. Looks like we're not going live on Amazon. <laughs> no problem. Just using regular paper right now because uh, I have no idea where my masking went. Let's get this so it just barely hangs over the edge. 
once again, I'm doing this because I don't want to tape directly on top of the leaf. Roman says, do you know why some urethane reducers feel a lot heavier in weight than others? Uh, to be honest with you, that they really shouldn't. At least a reducer. You know, some paints obviously are going to be lighter weight. Uh, but reducers being light, I don't know. Is that a thing? Yeah, good question. Maybe we should weigh it. <laughs> weigh it compared to another reducer. shielded off so we don't have any overspray on there we're going to put the newman off to the side the lid Okay, we're taped off, ready to go. Let's see, kind of mock up this stencil a little bit, see what it's gonna look like, okay. My first, my first thing is I kind of wanted to usually paint them like this, but then to be honest, like if you look at this and this, it looks like, who's the dude that used to do America's Funniest Home Videos? That don't look like Newman. It looks like the other dude. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, Saget. Yeah. Bob Saget. Oh, yeah. That looks exactly like Bob Saget. But that looks like Newman. So I was like, I can't do that. So I just decided to go sideways. I don't know. It's a funny thing I noticed. They kind of look similar. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to I'm gonna show you the paint colors. The paint tones, I should say. Because we're going to paint this in a purple tone. Purple, bluish, I guess, tone. I have the a light purple, a darker purple, a little bit darker purple, and then uh, once again, just a little bit darker. And I added just a tiny bit of black candy to that last mixture because I wanted to make it just a little bit darker. And we're going to be adding probably more black candy to that final mixture. So basically we're painting this what they would say like monochromatically uh in all like one color and different shades of that color so i made the purple candy and then basically i just mixed it with white base coat so each of these are white base coat with just a little bit more purple candy in them to tone them to that shade but i do have a video for you that i made earlier about an hour ago that it'll show you the process of what I did to actually make these. So hopefully it makes it easier. So we're gonna cut to that and then it's gonna come right back to us and then we're gonna get ready to start painting this thing. So I think you can play that for us. got it you have it right there that's how it's done 
I have the airbrush. We're using the Avante steel. We're going to see how this thing does. Uh, uh, one one thing, thing I did notice real quick is uh, it was it's harder to see the end of your needle compared to the Iwata because this is like a little more stubby. And when it comes to doing detail, sometimes you need that. It's probably fine, but we'll see how it really performs here once I get going. Uh, I know I know I'm going to be able to make it work. We'll just see what kind of detail I can get. I'm not going to get too crazy with this because we do want to make this you know under two hours if we can. And um, yeah, should at least show you how how it's done. If you have any questions, let me know. But it looks like there's a couple questions. Uh, Jeremy said, I saw in one of your older videos you use slow reducer. <clears throat> What's a slow reducer for? A uh, slow reduce, reducer would be used if you're like in really um, hot temperatures. Like say like you're spraying in like, you know, 90 degrees, 100 degrees or something. Um, that's going to, that reducer is going to flash off so fast that, uh, it could cause some problems with the paint. Um, maybe it dries up before it gets there, creates a texture so that they use a slow reducer that, uh, basically, uh, evaporates slower. So you can kind of reduce that, that, the, the, the time there. So it causes less problems. Uh, we're here, you know. Our temps aren't too bad. We get into the hundreds sometimes, but uh, most of the time we're it's pretty. It's not too humid or anything, so we don't have any problems here in Utah. But I know other other climates you could have some problems with that. But me, me personally, personally, I don't have a whole lot of experience. I usually use fast or medium. The lime line is a medium, and I feel like with medium you're you're pretty much good to go, unless, unless you're in extreme, extreme temperatures. temperatures. If you cleared over silver leaf, could you tape? to it or is that a no-go you would you don't really want to do that um if it's been like a few weeks you you could probably get away with it i've done it before but it's i've also taped to it where i've had problems so i try to stay away from it tape to the edge where it's not there and then use paper masking just like i did here all right that looks pretty freaky huh all right so I'm going to take my reference here. And we can see the lightest areas are here on his forehead. Um, his chin has some light areas. You know, there's obviously the glare in his glasses. A little darker there. So we're just going to use this image as uh, just reference to what's going on. But we do have... Um, everything's actually painted opposite right now. All the lights are the dark. But I'm going to go ahead and build this up to where I'm, all of this is pretty much going to be the lighter color. So you kind of see how how that happens here. I'm just going to slowly. I'm just going to build up super slow. Nothing too crazy. Just kind of all of everything. Concentrate, making sure I get the areas that do have the lightest. We're going to get we're going to get those more. But we're not going to just concentrate on one area. We're going to kind of go around this whole thing and lightly build it up slowly. Uh, totally rotten. So just getting into custom paints and on racing helmets. My question is, how do you come up with the tape line designs and know how to stack them? Thanks. How to stack the tape? Um, you know, I, I don't draw anything out. I kind of just use the tape to, as a, and just tape it out to see what I like. And if I like it, I just keep going with it. Um, as far as stacking goes, I don't plan anything, just like I said. So I kind of will, I'll just kind of lay tape over top of each other, like a design over the other. And then I'll kind of figure out where I want the overlaps to be. And then I'll cut the overlap after everything's like laid out. If you do mini truck graphics, it's there's a lot of that involved. It's a lot of laying graphics over top of each other, like one kind of going this way, that way, and then you could figure out where you want the overlap to happen. If you want it to tuck under or over, but it's just um, it, it's experimenting with the tape. I think is the best because every part has a different shape. 
try to complement the shape. And any ideas you have in your head, just put it out in tape, you know, just see what it looks like. So this is going to look worse before it looks better. That's one thing about airbrushing uh, portraits, at least the way the method that I use. As you saw when I laid the stencil out, it was, you can kind of tell what it was, you know, it was like, oh, wow, okay, that's, that's Newman. You know, it's painted the exact opposite because I'll be painting that again with a darker color over it. We're just kind of using that as a guide. But it definitely, you have periods um, where you'll start to think you're messing this up, but you're really not. You're just, you just need to add the texture. You're losing contrast for sure. The more I do this, the more paint I put on here, the more contrast I'm losing between these two. Um, and that's just, and it looks like it's getting ruined, but that's just the, the method. You have to kind of trust the process. Sure, I'm hitting like the brights there. Don't want the eyes to be dark. We really want those to pop. So we need to get them now. Uh, if, if we were to go back and try to do our, some of these highlights later, it would look completely different. So we have to make sure that we're building up this lightest color enough once again just building up slowly not concentrating on like because like when i started doing portraits sometimes it was like okay i'm gonna try to get the eyes the best i can i'll go back and forth and i'll get the eyes really good i'll get really detailed out um and then i'll kind of go from there you know because that way i can know where i'm kind of headed and i'll kind of know what it's going to start looking like because you'll kind of get in a hurry like oh it's just like yeah just do this a little more so i kind of see the end result a little bit but then what happens, you end up losing all that detail because this is not the stage to be adding detail. You can see how far away I am. I'm, I'm like, let's see, I'm like five fingers away from this. It's kind of hard to tell with this camera angle, but I'm like five fingers away. You'll notice once I get going, I'm going to end up being like right here. And my paint's going to be reduced a little more because I'm kind of loose right now, filling everything in. We're kind of molding. I guess the best way and that I've heard it explained it to me was you're kind of molding it like you would clay or something. We're not really even drawing it out. We're just getting the lights in, you know, like the chin right here. I'm doing strokes like, like this rather than strokes like this, you know, we're going to follow the cheek and follow the lines. Um, try to make that the face look round. Make sure we're bright enough there. Right above this eye is really light. There we go. Patrick just sent you a $20 super chat and said, thanks for everything. Woohoo! Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, I hope this helps you guys. Like this is this is not necessary to be a custom painter. You could be a full-time uh, pro custom painter and you don't even need to be able to do stuff like this but if you can your books are going to be full most likely and really this is not that hard and I, I hope I hope this doesn't come across as like look what I can do I don't want it to be that I want it to be a learning experience uh, for everybody even myself because I, I really haven't done this in quite a while um, and maybe this one, I would go a little slower than I am now. I, you know, I'm just trying to whip through this. It doesn't need to be perfect. 
It just needs to be pretty good. So, and within a time limit. So I think we can do that. I'm just right here. I'm just, um, as you can see right there, I was doing like a dagger stroke here. I'm kind of like doing like a splotchy kind of mottled look because his, his hair is all nappy. So you kind of want, huh? <laughs> well, it is. AJ said, Adam, your tape has helped me on my tape bouts on motorhomes at the dealership that I work for. Wondering if we'll ever see half inch lime line. Uh, no, I don't think so. I barely even use quarter inch, to be honest with you, even on a car. Um, if you wanted to do half inch, you would just use like eighth inch on each side and then fill in the middle. I feel like that's even better. Yeah, the because uh, the the thing is that the fatter the tape gets, the more expensive it gets to buy, too. So then, and then like people are like twenty bucks for a roll, because it's already expensive. Which is you know that's just kind of the way that that it is a it is a big roll of vinyl that's cut, it just cost money. And but yeah, so yeah, I don't know. I think somebody might have it though. Check with FBS. I think they might have it. In fact, I'm pretty sure they do have it. Cody said he needs to purchase a new paint gun. And Patrick said, it's so true about that, the method. I do portraits as well. And they look so questionable at certain stages. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad that other people know that too. It does. It's like, what in the heck is, and if you're new, you'll just want to give up because it's easy to think you're ruining it. You know, I don't want too much texture. Like I definitely see how this is. And hopefully, Hopefully I can see that a little better. But see how it's just kind of blotchy. It's I'm kind of just creating an underpainting of the textures, you know, trying to keep the face kind of you know, rolling around like a face would. You know, this would be like there's the collar right there. So see how I just kind of I move the way that. The, the clothing or the face or the cheek or whatever it is that complements that shape. We're just going to fade this out. Same thing here. Okay, so let me double check, make sure we got, we definitely need to brighten up this edge of the cheek. Right there needs to be brighter. Underneath this lip needs to be brighter. So far, this airbrush is pretty good. I haven't got to the detail yet, but this first stage is literally when you'll spray the most amount of paint. So not only am I farther away, I'm spraying more paint than I will on any other layer that I do. I've got more work to do here. I have to, basically, I'm creating uh, the majority of the underpainting just with this this one shade and then I'll come back obviously darken it up it needs to be brighter that needs to be brighter here his chin got the highlight all over right there looking good there looking good there looks like right there can be brighter don't want to miss those because we're not going to get them back very easy Once you get too far, too dark, you'll start to have a blue shift. But here's the thing is we're doing this in a purple. So the blue shift um, we, doesn't really happen because it's already bluish purple. So you can't really see a blue shift. So if somebody, let me know if somebody wants me to explain blue shifts. But yeah, that's a. Swampy said, explain using HPLP with a small compressor, small compressor for these guys. Um, so if you're going to use an HVLP with a small compressor, uh, it all kind of depends on how small the compressor is. Um, definitely if I was, if, if you're limited on air, you're going to want to spray a thinner material. Um, so you can spray at a lower PSI because the thicker the material, the high, the more 
uh, pressure and the more power that you need and the more air consumption you'll have. So that would be one rule is if you can thin it out more, thin it out more, even with a clear coat, thin it out to 10 or 20 percent, whatever it allows, um, and just do more coats with time in between. Also, if you're like, if you're doing a car, don't attempt it. Just get the right air compressor. It's a tough thing to do because you have to get around that car when you're clear coating it in a certain amount of time. It's not like base coat. Uh, if you're doing motorcycles, you can do do the tank. Like, okay, it, it'll take you longer, you know, but whatever. Do the tank to start. You'll be fine. By the time you're ready for your next coat, your air compressor can kind of fill up. But um, as far as getting the right air compressor, I would say uh, using a two-stage compressor pump. And um, mine actually hooks to a 220, but I, I'm pretty sure 110s can still have the two-stage pump. I don't know a whole lot about compressors. I do know that the two-stage pump is the way you want to go because that will fill up the air fast enough. But there's a, there's new technology out there that might be fine. Hopefully that helps somebody. What's that? Do they? HVLP guns eat up air supplies. Yeah, well, not as bad as some other guns. You can have some siphon feed guns that will eat up air like crazy. Uh, you can use a mini. Also, yeah, good. On that, on that same note, you can use a mini gun, something with a 1.0, and still get away with it. Okay, I think we're almost there. Let's make sure. This eyeball needs to be a lot brighter right there. Not really drawing anything in. I'm just kind of just brightening it up. Even if it's over what we just did, we want to make sure that that's we're not going to lose those eyes because that's very, very important. Okay. I don't want to like overdo this too much i'm going to lightly give this a graze wash it over okay there we go it's looking worse right uh, yeah <laughs> there we go guys god has to be a little worse i'm gonna use a tack rag here and this is just gonna take off some of the uh texture uh, spray from that patrick yeah said, can't really tell huh? patrick said laugh out loud this can go either way you can have a newman or a really chubby captain marvel at this stage <laughs> laugh out loud i should have just started it and then let people guess what the hell it was okay next Next color tone. We have a little bit darker purple here. Let me, it's gonna need a little more reducer. So I am mixing this with a urethane reducer. On portraits, I'll usually, rather than just like lining out um, over tape, usually the paint would be a little thicker. In this case, I'm gonna thin out the paint a little more. We want to make sure it lays out nice and smooth. But here's the next color tone right here. All right, Newman, get back here. So I'm just going to kind of follow up on the lines I had before. You can also cut in some uh, tabs or some marks, I think. I don't know what they call them exactly, but uh, you cut in little reference marks in there. You can line them back up. We could have done one here and here and then got rid of them, like a triangle. But yeah, we don't. We can figure out where this thing goes. We've got a point right there, and we got a point right there. So I think we're good. Actually, down just a tiny bit right there. All right, I'm going to go ahead and re register this stencil. And a little bit darker purple. Let's 
Exactly, purple sepia. Purple monochromatic. They're easier to do than a color portrait, in my opinion. You got to have less knowledge of color theory because you're just using the same color. Like if you were to do this in, in regular color, you would like there's certain things you just wouldn't do. You'd actually would you would most likely paint it out in a in a brown kind of sepia to start, and then you would color it in later. Something that's not my strong point for sure. I'd rather paint this way. I like the style too, rather than color. Looks cool. Oh, you're coming back. I like ya. <laughs> All right. You can see. Now we have a darker color register on there. Now you have the guy that plays on uh, Roseanne. <laughs> That's his name. That's what he looks like. I don't like. know. What's the husband's name that plays on Roseanne? I don't know. Maybe it's whoever can come up with it first. We'll give him something. You get a prize pack if you can figure that out. What's that guy's name? You got to know his stage name and his uh, real name. Is it? Is it Arnold? God, I don't know. Somebody will chime in. It's on Roseanne. <laughs> yeah, so. Dan. Dan? Is that stage name or real name? Maybe both. I don't even know. I didn't think it was Dan. I think it is Dan. Is it Dan? All right. So I'm going to go ahead and what I'm doing is I'm just lightly coming in here and just blending in some of these hard lines that I have right here. <laughs> Named Luscious Larry. Glasses right there. We'll go ahead and just add in. Someone said Dan. Someone said Danny Tanner. Someone said Jason, Dan Connor and John Goodman. Oh, is it John Goodman? It is John Goodman. And what was the? I think that's correct. You might want to check that. That sounds right. Once again, with the hair, I'm just going to kind of spot it in. It does need to go darker because that's our the darkest area. So we're going to be pushing that back. Well, who do we got as a winner, huh? Somebody new. You gotta have both names. No. First one with both names. Well, that's not who it is, but you win. Yes, it is. Well, that's not who this is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about a completely yeah, different is. guy here. Once again, just taking reference from that, and I'm, I know that right where that line is, that there's a shadow going up there. Same thing here. Just trying to put the lights and the darks back in where they're supposed to go, because we're going to go back and forth on this a couple of times. This color is pretty dark. We got one light spot in there. We'll get that back in. That's an evil eye. Yeah, yeah.
blend all this out. The shadow there, blend that shadow down. Okay, I'll kind of just give this a light graze again, kind of blend everything in. We're going to lose a little bit of contrast, but we are building up layers, and that's what we're wanting to do in these first few layers. We're not really looking for too much detail. We'll get in there and do that detail here once we go back and forth a couple of times. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to the original white one time. It's actually a light, light purple. Gonna over reduce it a little bit more. When you control the mail, you control information. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, thought I wanted to put that in there somewhere, but I was like, that's a lot of words. You were? Yeah, because that's his. Yeah. That was his thing. Yeah, I remember he says that. Control information. Okay, back with the. It looks like white until you actually spray it on white. We're just gonna go ahead and hit these highlights back. One right there, top of this. Top of the nose, the eyes, brighten those up a little bit. It's a horrible weasel of a mailman. <laughs> That's not loud. Is that something he says? Yeah, well, you would. Someone else says it on the show, bud? I don't know. Yeah. Sure, it was Jerry. Under his eyes are looking pretty dark. I want to make sure I get those lights back up in there. We can have some shadow up underneath here for sure, but we were getting pretty dark under there. So let's make sure we hit that. Lights here. Definitely top of that nose, because that's really going to be light. Make the lip. Here's a big highlight right there. Pretty good right there. I'm pretty good right there on this edge. Okay. Okay. Is it getting better or is it getting worse? It's getting crazy. All kinds of colors. All right, we're going to hit it up a little bit darker. We have kind of like a mid-tone purple here. I would say it's darker than a mid-tone. I don't know, maybe. Uh, Cody just sent you a $20 super chat and said, luckily I get to go into work late tomorrow. Yeah. Hello. Thank you for that. Thank you. Yes. All right, Newman, back at it. Um, Vic asks, is the new paint gun available yet? Uh, I haven't. It's uh, it's coming to us any day. We should have it any time now. You never know with, with shipping nowadays. Yeah, because it was supposed to already be here. Yep. No problem, though. We'll get them. Okay, let's see. Make sure we register this right. I guess it looks like it's on right there. No, okay, right there. Let's 
Okay, I think we got it there. Oh. Bumpy said, looking kind of like Fat Albert. <laughs> Who's that? Who's that? Fat Albert? Yeah. He's a cartoon. It's a little thicker than uh, I was planning on. We'll go with it. We're just laying the stencil down right now, but I'm definitely going to thin this out a little bit. Got it. Getting better. All right, let's mess this thing up and we can. Mess it up? Yeah, that's how we do it. We make it look a little worse. Mess it up again? Yeah. I'm gonna take the same shade and we're going to be a little more careful about where we're spraying now because we're a little farther down the process here. So we're not going to get all crazy because if we're going back to white now, which we can, I say white, but it's actually light purple. It's going to have a different look to it once we get the color shades too far away from each other. So we start going really dark. Once we go light again over the dark, it's going to have a different look than taking light and building it up darker on top of that and preserving the, uh, the light. So when it gets to this stage, it's about some of the time it's like about what you don't paint rather than what you do paint. So we're kind of switching the way we're thinking here. Oh, I did say I was going to thin this paint out a little more. That's another thing is you want to make sure your paint is getting super thin to even to where it looks like it's starting to, to blow out, like to spread. I'll kind of give you, a, I'll kind of give you an example here. Freaked out like that. You know that that's, it's, you know, it's really juicy. So I'm gonna do that. If it was thick, it wouldn't do that. It would just pretty much just fall up. You know, it wouldn't spread out. So we wanna get it more like that. Even though we don't want that to happen, we're gonna be more careful about how far we rock back our trigger, you know, so you can see that it can get out of control to where it spits a little bit. That's where we want it. Bumpy and Jeremy are on it, telling people to hit the thumbs up button. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank you. I gotta take a seat here. Okay. Question, um, Adam, is primer supposed to be a little textured? It's not quite spatula looking, but... Yeah. You can also reduce it with the same urethane reducer, like I was reducing this out. Um, and you can, like, do that on your last coat reduce it out a little bit and it'll flow out a little nicer but yes you're gonna have orange pill and you're gonna have texture you're just gonna knock that down now if you're primering it to sand it it's gonna have texture if you're primering it to be to go straight to paint like on a wet on wet process they call it primer you wait for like a half an hour and then you go straight to paint you you're gonna need to reduce it out more and make sure that that texture is smoother it's not that you want you don't want it too textured because your uh, base coat will take on that texture most likely unless you're using black, it kind of hides it a little more. Um, or if, you, you do, if you're using silver base coat, it's gonna make a drastic difference if you're spraying silver base coat over a textured primer that's not sanded.
you see right here this the, the highlight on his chin i'm gonna kind of draw around that and then shade off of that so we're gonna keep the highlight there nice and soft nothing too crazy we can always build up more paint can't really take it away once it's on And you can put as much detail as you want. You can start adding the detail to the eyes and stuff. You can see I'm, a, I'm about like an inch away now and spraying a lot less paint. I'm just, just building up a little bit around that eye. I'm gonna just going to kind of darken this up, see how bright that is right there. doesn't look right. But I do want to try to protect uh, a little bit of that, that highlight there. I could even maybe grab, I think there's a stencil over there. He says he's painting skate decks and he's primary it and then he's primary it to get it ready to flake it. Oh. So does it need to be textured or is it supposed to be textured? Um, it doesn't matter if it's textured if you're flaking it. So don't worry if you're, but make sure that you're either A, you're staying within the window of the primer to allow to go straight to the flake. Or you're sanding it. So if you're sanding it, it doesn't matter about the texture. You're going to sand it smooth anyways. Even if you don't sand it all the way smooth when it's the primer, it's you're fine. Just make sure you get a grit to it so that flake has something to stick to. Um, but the flake is going to cover any kind of a, any kind of problem. That's the nice thing about flaking something. You could have little problem areas here and there. And uh, the flake will take care of it. I'm going to take this stencil here and I'm going to find the right shape. Probably this one right here. Nope. There we go. Do the same thing right here. We're just going to line that up, bring it up. And just those little tiny little details like that is what matters. Probably could hit that just a tiny bit harder. See how we just protected that little highlight right there? This one, we kind of lost it a little bit. We're okay. Same thing here. We're just going to go ahead and right below that. Looks like that one has... Like that shape right there is almost exactly like this shape right here. See that? We're going to go ahead. If I can quit bumping this thing with my hat. Okay. Freehand it in there a little bit. Okay, the forehead. We ain't gonna give him too many wrinkles here, so. We'll go ahead and just lightly, it's like, we'll just, let me find something right here that looks similar to that. Right, this one right here. Okay, here we go. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Lose my train of thought here. Okay. This is the one I want. Sorry, guys. And that'll give us our starting point right there as a hard line. Let's 
same thing right here with this nose. We'll go ahead and just shield that off. See, I put a nice highlight there and a shadow there. Let me go ahead and blend this in just a little more. Okay. Don't get too dark. Looks like we're darker on this outer edge. We're going to fill that in around this right here. Definitely be darkening up this nappy hair. That's where the ear is right there. Yeah, you could do that. But I don't know, you can do it this way too. There's a lot of different ways you can do the same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and shadow this whole edge because I'm gonna bring this edge back with a highlight. here you see it all kind of shaded a little bit darker and really if it doesn't match perfect I mean you're fine it's like you just do what you can do but sometimes that's why I like painting characters better than people because with uh, people, it's like if it's somebody you see every day, like I don't look like that person. So I always stayed away from like doing portraits of like people of family members because that's a tough sell because um, they see them all the time and you don't. But if it's a character like this, it's a little easier. It's not like you see Newman pretty much ever. Well, I mean, if it's Newman's family, they're going to be like, that is not me. <laughs> Irvis Newman is like, that's not even close. I don't think he's a mailman, Dave, anymore. Go ahead and fade that in. darken his hair a little more we've got to get to the very edge on this because we want that we want heavy contrasts from here we want a backlighting except for right here i think i want to keep it dark but we'll we'll have a, a nice backlighting right there so we're going to want a lot of contrast between the edge of him and the background that we're going to make brighter more nap I think they're brothers, right? <laughs> Cousins. Yeah. Like I said, it's been a while since I've done something like this. So if it's not that great, I don't know. I did put way too much paint right there, but 
You see that? Like that is not supposed to be that dark right there. Now he has a big old dimple or something. I don't know. It's okay. It's not the end of the world. We can always go back and forth with this a couple times. I really, you, you want to start to do that less as you get going. You want to make less mistakes the darker you get. Okay. But once we do go darker, that won't be a big of a problem. All right. Let's go to, we'll go ahead and maybe, I'm going to hit that light that up. I'll go ahead and hit that with the lighter color. Wayne Knight, he also plays a cop from Third Rock Oh, he did? Oh, he's a cop animal man, huh? <laughs> All right, this is really, really over reduced. This is the lightest color of blue that we used. We're going to go back to that real quick. We can even. We may be jumping the gun when we hit this outer edge, but we're going to go ahead and do it so we can kind of get an idea of what kind of contrast we're going to have. Getting easier to match that thing up. Okay, we don't want to spray any of this, though. If we do, it'd be like the, the bling in the eyes, the little highlight in the eyes. kind of see the background there we go okay all right so i'm going to go back and hit just a little bit of this highlight right here same thing here And you can see how this is, this is a stylized graphic. This is, I'm not following that exactly. I could cut out a stencil and we could like, like somebody was saying earlier, we could just basically uh, cut that out and then spray it on there. We're, we're getting a little bit more of a realistic look to this. And that's kind of where I was, that's what I'm used to doing. And that's kind of what I would rather show you. So as you can see that that highlight is not the same as this highlight that we're putting on. This is softer. And everything's going to be kind of softer. But having an image like this gives us uh, something to work for. And we do want those uh, hints of sharpness like it has here and there and kind of like what we put in. We want those because that's what kind of makes it look real when you have a mixture of sharp lines and soft lines. Like, for instance, this. Oh, sorry about that. Just hit these guys. Isaac said, this is looking really cool. Yeah, thanks. Like I said, it, it looks worse before it gets looking good. Got to have patience. And when I'm, we're all said and done, I might actually, some of these hard lines, I might actually just use that stencil and we'll, we'll use it for the highlights. We can do that. Because on the glasses, I really want a sharp line there. We'll lighten up the cheek. Even though it doesn't show it there, I know this cheek's going to have a little bit of a highlight there. I do need to lighten up what we had going on here. Yeah, peanut butter and great salad. Great yeah, I'm sound. on his feet. <laughs> <laughs> Not funny. <laughs> well, it looks like. Uh, okay, here, I'm getting rid of it. We're going for it. We're lighting that up a little bit. Let's get that chin lightened up. Nice and soft. 
He has a back, uh, a backlighting on his double chin right there. Well, maybe <laughs> I think I may have like need to brighten this up just a little bit right here too. Okay, he's starting to look like himself. I'm liking what I'm seeing here. You know, I don't have all the details out. Like I could, we can really get in and put some of these details in, but I'm gonna go ahead and book. I'll wait, cause I got one more shade to go darker before we get all crazy into that. Go ahead and lighten up. Open his forehead just a little bit. Don't want to lose what I got going on, so I need to be careful not to go too far. Maybe a little highlight right there. You know, I'm guessing a little bit on this because I don't have all the detail. If this was a, a realistic picture that I was going off of, there would be more to look at. But this is definitely breaking it down easier so I can, I don't have to really guess and know exactly where all the highlights are. It's kind of, it's within like, I think there's five different, six different color uh, variations on here, color tones. Go a little bit brighter on that double chin. Once again, I'm just kind of coming up that cheek right there. I'm not gonna go in this way, back and forth. You know, I'm gonna kind of follow the follow that this right there. I think we're good. I'm gonna hit this highlight. Yeah, could have been. Let's see, where's the? That's that. Uh, yeah, I can kind of like these actually don't belong here, but. Little bit of the zipper down there we'll we'll go ahead and once we fade this in you barely barely be able to see those it'll just be just a little bit of a light highlight of the zipper right there okay like what i'm seeing so far let's go ahead and we'll head to a darker color I think this is the last shade we have in the group. I can't get this lid off. All right, last shade is a uh, darker purple, purple blue. It does have a couple drops of the candy black in this as well. I didn't put that in that video, but let's go ahead and we'll reduce it out a little more. Like I said, we'll go ahead and fade those out so they're not so prominent. We could even go back and highlight those again, but really we don't want those to show up too much. All right, back to the stencil. Where we at? Here we go. Come here, Newman. All right, it's getting easier to see. Line it right up there with the eye socket there. Got the pupil there. Oops. Okay. Looking good.
I'm not going to hit it all. I'm going to kind of like just slowly build it up. And not really hitting all of the stencil either because not all of it I really want that dark. I know I want the pupil dark. Glass frames need to be dark, but maybe not way up in that corner. It needs to be dark. We'll do the nose, but we'll keep it to the top of the nose right there and let it kind of blend down. So we're not really going to hit this edge right here too hard. Maybe not hit that. Let's go ahead and hit this. Kind of light. There we go. spot right there where I think we want it darker at least on the perimeter oh he's looking better oh cherry All right Roman gave you a $20 super chat and said I know I'll keep getting better with practice but I mostly like the way your videos make me feel like it's within reach even if I don't have 20 years experience so thanks for doing what you do exactly and and really what it comes down to is having the, on these is having the airbrush control. This is all just techniques that I used. This is all like you can, anybody can cut out the, with an exacto blade, cut out the dark areas, lay down the stencil. You know, you could even spray it down with, but it's when it comes to the little, the, the free hand in here, you just have to know the push down, the pull back. That action right there. You do that enough times, you're going to have a muscle memory. And you're going to be able to use the instrument uh, much easier. But once again, I'm not really doing a whole lot of detail. I'm just kind of putting the lights and the darks and trying to keep them where they need to be. So, but yeah, thanks for that comment. Oh, <laughs> well, even better. Thank you so much. Not necessary, but I appreciate that, guys. Really. <laughs> Should I make him a little chubbier? No. Oh. He's missing his little thing right there. His little, does he need it? Uh, can probably. What, his double tin? Well, no, under his, he, under, he has a shadow under there, that lip that's just kind of missing. See that? Oh. If you look at that compared to right, we're missing. We can just lightly just come back, line this thing up. That's what's nice about using um, a stencil that you cut. You can come back and re-register it when you need to. Oh, okay. There we got some definition. And sometimes more is less, you know, you don't really like we can come, we can come out here a little bit and then maybe connect this stencil. I don't want to do the same thing I did last time. Okay. There we go. So just kind of just, brought a little light shadow underneath there. We're still pretty dark right there. We're not gonna mess with that. I like the little highlight going on there. Um, let's go ahead and maybe work around that. So far so good on this airbrush though. It's, uh, it's working out. If this, if this whole painting was not working out, I would totally blame it on the airbrush. Because it wouldn't be me. Right, Ash? Right. <laughs> Karina gave you a $20 super chat. Oh, thank you. Appreciate and that. Thank you guys for all you do in answering my rookie questions. Well, I don't think there's such things as a rookie question. And I, I know there's a lot of other people 
that will appreciate you ask, asking those questions because you can go back and rewatch these live. Not live. Rewatch the live. Maybe they're wanting to know. Maybe the they want to know the same thing. Who knows? All right, let's work on his fro a little bit here. We're going to go ahead and create some hard edges here. Like I said, we don't want everything soft. We want to just kind of still put some hard edges here and there. Blend it in with some free hand. We do want the edge of this to be pretty dark, though, because we want a lot of contrast right there. We just want it to look like there's just a light just beaming right behind them. So even if like we're making it look worse right now, but we're gonna, we'll be fine. We'll, it'll look better. Blend that off there. Get a little closer here. We're going to put a little bit of detail in the hair. Not too much. We don't want it to look the same everywhere. Like maybe a little more detail right up in here rather than over there, you know. This will probably be a little more fuzzy. All right, how are we looking here? We'll go ahead and be a little risky, but I'll live on the edge here. Let's go ahead and lay this stencil. We risk changing the shape of the eye a little bit here, but I think I got it. There we go. We're going to put those highlights back in those eyes, too. I just wanted to make sure they had that down there. That one's not too bad. Okay, I think I'm just about ready to hit this with a... I don't want to shadow it too much. I like... That's looking a little brighter. I'm gonna go ahead and lay in a shadow right underneath those glasses. This could actually be thinned out just a little more. Let me go ahead and do that. Let's try this now. Oh, that's thinner. Okay, let's go back. We'll put the the uh, highlights in the eyes, and then we'll go ahead and re-register this to kind of sharpen everything up. Okay, back to the lightest blue. I call it blue, but it's really purple. It looks blue though, doesn't it? Yeah. Eh, bluish tone. We could hit this, we could wash this with a, a candy purple afterwards. We would lose a lot of contrast, but um, that, that could happen as well. It's just a different look. But once again, you'll lose a lot of contrast with that. All right, this is really going to it's really gonna punch this out so look good. Let's see here.
and then I know I said I was going to cut out the stencil, but I feel like I can still use this. Maybe I'll just go ahead and doesn't need to be perfect. It's just a glare on the glasses. Maybe this one will be a little better. Okay, there we go. Got that glare there. Let's see if we have a shape. Go ahead and Just hit a couple light areas just to complement above the eye there. Just a little bit. And then uh, what's very important is we got the reflection in the eyes. I'll go ahead and practice right here before I do it. Ooh, blue out there. So you don't want that. Okay. Oh, thank you. Okay, so I don't know how much more I'm gonna do this. Like I can really get in there. Like we can highlight the nose a little bit more, and I'll kind of, you know, just lightly kind of get in there, just put a little highlight there. We're, this is we're using very very little paint at this point. What about the whites of his eyes? Yeah, we do need. We can work on the whites of his eyes a little bit. Let's go ahead and. And then we can even we can even re-register that back. We'll go ahead and do that maybe. So let's go ahead and brighten those up. Oh, you want to shut that window, babe? Those mosquitoes are getting bad. Oh, see, there we go. Okay, now we're now we're super bright, but we're okay. See, we kind of lost the eyes a little bit. Oh, he's gone. That's okay though. We're not really, you know, make sure I'm going to do it wide enough if I'm going to do it again. So it's just simple as going in there. We're just going to lighten up his eyeballs all the way and we can come back and re-register the stencil in those areas. So we'll take the darkest color. I should say darkest tone. It's all the same color. It's just the just the intensity of the purple tone. So this is how you would basically take care of that problem. So we just kind of like lighten them all up nice and soft. Where did my stencil? It is. Oh yeah, I really like those up. Okay. Yep. Ah, I'll fix that. He's got wider eyes now. Let's go ahead and put those highlights back in because we can always just redo those. No big deal. Darren Higby said it's crazy to think that you don't do this type of airbrush work anymore and how effortless you can still do it. it shows how amazing and talented you truly are. Yeah, I mean it's you kinda you kinda remember it as you do it. You just lose uh Maybe airbrush control a little bit here and there and maybe forget a couple of things, but it's all the same. It's like anything. The more you do it, the better you get at it. Okay, let's put those 
white reflections back in his eyes. Back to the lighter. Over reduce it. Ooh, it's really thin. Ah, I can do it. Let's do it. I put two in there, huh? Oh, there you are. Two. Yeah, you can do two in one. Yeah, I like the two and the one. I don't know. Looks good to me. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of fade this out just a little bit. But there we go. Like I said, we can go back. At, at, at any stage of this, when we first started, we could have went back and forth with those couple of shades that were similar. Once you start getting into the darker tones, there's less you can do of going back and forth without it kind of uh, making it look, I guess, uh, muddy. It starts to get muddy and overpainted. Um, but doing all that hard work to make sure that you're, you know, you're in the right tones, uh, the in the, you know, in getting all your textures and stuff done. We could have went back and forth a couple of times before we went dark, but. Uh, once again, I didn't want this to be too long of a video. I'm happy enough with the with the results. I'll probably end up throwing a little bit of a light pearl over this, and then obviously it's going to get clear coated. But let's go ahead and see what it looks like. Peel it off here. Isaac said, "Crazy, you make this look so easy." Yeah, and everybody could do. Anybody could paint it to this level. We could get real crazy where we can get down, spend the time, get all the highlights on the edges. Like, because really we could, you know, cut out a nice highlight there. You know, we could shadow. The nice thing is this, to, to make stuff look really good is, like, see right here, there could have been a little bit more of a shadow that kind of came down there. This could be lighter here and then shadowed off of there, putting a backlighting on this edge. Definitely more work could be done here to kind of like you know get everything to flow a little stenciled there it's okay it's uh yeah it, I, i'm happy with this you know that took me an hour 20 minutes not bad said overall what are your thoughts on the Avante? um i i thought i was having a little bit of an issue with it the other day but it's actually spraying really good i just had to clean it so yeah so far so good is it better than the iwata one thing that is better than the iwata that does beat it out is it has i love how big uh the the paint tank is on this compared to the iwata neo i like it for the money, so far so good. All right, Newman. And how's that? I just peed in your mail, Philly. It's perfect. <laughs> All right, cool. I think that's it. Any more questions, real quick, before we log off? All right. Appreciate you guys all being here again. Thank you all for the super chats. And remember, we go live every Thursday next week. Who knows? Hit me up. Let me know if you want me to paint something else weird. <laughs> I would love to. <laughs> this doesn't get the views as painting motorcycle parts, but I don't care. I, I like to paint random stuff. And you can only paint so many fenders and tanks and stuff. So, All right. That's it. Okay. We'll see you guys next time.
Thanks, guys. We'll see you next Thursday. Later.